few years ago, I was in Oklahoma City, and I was there for the birth of my first granddaughter, like many of you. You remember those days. And I went there for the birth of my first granddaughter. I traveled with my family half the night. We got there, and my daughter went into labor at about that time. And all of the family, the extended family, had gathered in Oklahoma City, and we followed that car with my daughter and son-in-law to the hospital, and we were there for the birth of my granddaughter. I had had an older grandson before that, but I, so there was something about the fact that I was going to have a granddaughter, that we were going to be able to continue, that we would give life. It meant so much to us. And so I went, and we went to the hospital that night, and I was so moved. Everything went smooth for my daughter. The family was happy. I looked at the face of my granddaughter. She was beautiful. And I, I was so appreciative that I talked to the nurses and the doctors, and I said, Pina Gigi, thank you for doing this for me. Thank you. It means so much to me that you would treat us so well. And the nurse, being a good public relations kind of a nurse at that hospital in Oklahoma City, said something to me that I'll share with you tonight. I don't know why she said it. Perhaps she said it because I was supposed to bring it to you. She said that, I said, this is a good hospital. She started talking to me about the needle, the, the neonatal uh, and, and the birthing units and the critical care, the emergency care, and I didn't understand any of it, but she was saying, we're one of the best in Oklahoma City. We do a wonderful job. We have good doctors. And that's what hospital personnel is supposed to do, reassure. And I was listening to it, but I wasn't understanding it, and I wasn't hearing it very much until she said something. On the evening of the birth of my first granddaughter, we're a good hospital. During the bombing, many were brought here. And then she went on. But that always sticks with me. During the bombing, many of the children were brought here. So I was there to celebrate the uh, beginning of a whole nother generation of the Ho-Chunk of the Winnebago people. And I was reminded of that. I thought about it and I set it aside because it was a very joyful time. And then the next day I went downtown in Oklahoma City and they were having an art fair there. And everything was going on and they had good things to eat. And I walked and had stages and things going on. And I've been thinking about that. And uh, I walked by this stage and I looked up there and I seen a whole bunch of white people. <laughs> and I, I say that because among them there was a black guy and there was three Indian people. And so I, I noticed them and, and so it, it was an interesting group and I watched them and they were cloggers. And they had those shoes on and they were clogging and they were smiling and they were having a good time and I kind of got into it. And my daughter said, come on, you're making me look bad. <laughs> I said, you go ahead, I'll meet you over there. I want to watch them. I want to watch them. And I watched them and they were enjoyed themselves and they had fun. And, and, and just for a minute by myself, I just thought to myself and probably even muttered it on my lips. Why would anybody want to hurt these people? Why would anybody want to hurt these people? These kind of things I tell you about, we see every day, we experience every day, we watch every day these things, but we do not ponder that like we should. We're reckless in our disregard for life reckless, callous to death, 
callous to the fact that many among us and in this world, in war-torn places, children die and people are not allowed to live and to grow and to flourish. All we want to do is to live. And standing in the way of that in the future for our children, for our grandchildren, are the things that we are trying to do on native Omaha lands right here. What if the whole world, I say this respectfully to all of us, what if the whole world doesn't want to be like us? How arrogant we are that everybody should want to be like us. Maybe they don't want to be like us. And maybe what we need to do is to say that not everybody agrees and, and, and that not everybody wants what we want. And I think that's something that we need to, you know, ponder, something that we need to be thinking about more and more when we come together at times like this. You will be able to set the agenda. You will continue to set the agenda as we explore this. And something that I think is so interesting to me that I share with you is the fact that all of you, no matter where you came from, many, many nations, many, many states, I want to share something with you that you probably haven't thought about. We're not uh, all here. It's, uh, it's no coincidence that you're here. You're no coincidence that you're breaking bread and you're sharing in good fellowship, those people you share fellowship with tonight. That is not a coincidence. You know, we're put here. We are set here because we've been given talents and abilities to change something if we have the nerve. And to say some things that people don't want to hear if we have the nerve to maybe even strike a blow you know, for justice and, and for safety for our children and the generations to come, if we have the nerve. I really believe there is no coincidence we've come over here to talk about these things and to, and, and to see what we can do to make the rest of us understand. I think that's so very important to us. We'll do it in total disregard for the rest of the world. Native people among you tonight have said this many, many times, that Native people are like the miner's canary. If we come and we bring something to you, please hear it. Because it's just a matter of time until you're going to experience it. And when we see where this can lead, I would hope that all of us take heed because it's something that's going to be harmful not only to your great-grandchildren but to mine and the work that we do is for all of us the Lakota people you know they say mitakuwas 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 all my relations they acknowledge every day and every discussion that we are all related that we should remind ourselves of that. Everybody in this world, we are all related.